I'm Marty Jagoda, the SRT Powertrain Calibration Lead for the SRT V8 Hemi platform of engines. Uh, welcome to Dino Cell C8 here in Auburn Hills. It's the birthplace of the 392 Hemi that I've been working on the last three years. C8's a pretty historic cell. There's uh, six, the 6.1, which is the previous version uh, of SRT V8, did all of its development here. Uh, there's also been some Viper development here, the 8.3 liter and the 8.4 liter. So it's kind of been tagged an SRT engine performance cell for the last 10 years or so at least. What we have is here is the engine hooked to the dyno. It's an AC dyno uh, and essentially it applies a load to the engine and it allows us to control the engine to any speed and load condition we want. So we can control it to any engine RPM and any map level. When we're applying the load to the dyno and it's reading out, we're actually putting power back on the grid. So we actually help power the city of Auburn Hills with all of the cells here. But in, in layman's terms, it's an engine hooked to a load cell and this controls it to whatever we want it to. The windage tray and oil pan that are on this were adopted from the 6.1, so I'd love to take credit for it, but a lot of the work was actually done on the 6.1. We did have to modify the windage tray just a little bit to allow for our stroke. We've got an added stroke on the 6.4. 392. Um, and this windage tray and oil pan combination as compared to uh, a standard 5.7 is probably worth in the range of 5 to 10 horsepower. So 1 to 2 percent. We actually started out the development of, the, of this engine with an intake that looked a lot like the Viper intake. And it made a lot of horsepower, um, but the torque curve wasn't that friendly. So we adapted what we like to call the SRV. It's short runner valve. It's an active intake manifold that gives long runner torque and short runner horsepower. So this engine just breathes torque and it makes torque everywhere the 6.1 never did. And, and, and that's what makes the vehicle feel so free revving because it's so linear uh, up through the RPM range. At 4,800 RPM, the blade in the intake switches to horsepower mode and that's what allows it to continually run up to redline almost seamlessly. Yeah, the, the valve is very simple. It's Again, it's flow control and that's it. Um, but what it does is it changes the amount of airflow that we're allowing into the tuning of the exhaust. We've got center mufflers and rear resonators there. And the more airflow that we can limit going through those tuning devices, the quieter that it's ultimately going to be in the vehicle. When we run MDS, the first level of control is just pure torque model. We model the torque in V4 mode and we know what we're able to run. Then what we do is it's a purely a seat of the pants. We map. Uh, based on NVH from the driver's seat and from the rear of the seat. And where it gets objectionable is where we start cutting what we call the fly zone. It's as simple as that. And we run it very close to the edge, um, but that's what determines the fly zone in the vehicle. The NVH that's objectionable is, is boom out of the exhaust. Uh, it just kind of sounds like a motorboat behind you or a, or a tractor type noise. It's very unpleasant, especially if you're sitting in the back seat. So that's the number one thing that we do not allow in any of our vehicles. The, this engine uh, runs better cooler, just like every engine does. It gets to a point, though, where you need to have traction as well. If you can find a nice 55 degree Fahrenheit sunny day where you can get traction, this thing will run like an absolute animal. Um, we do all of our calibrations starting at a nominal of 86 degrees. Anything cooler than that, you'll be getting a little benefit from some extra spark. It's, it looks like a spider web. There's thermocouples, um, pressure taps, you know, measured everywhere in here. Uh, the biggest things that we're looking for, number one is back pressure. That's always a huge one, that, especially on an SRT product. We want to have the least amount of back pressure possible. Um, the other thing we're looking at is coolant temperature. Um, again, that allows us to control the coolant temperature. We also measure the air charge in here. This engine doesn't actually have it, but the most interesting piece of instrumentation on this is actually a Kistler probe that would normally go into the cell, uh, into the piston chamber, and run all, it'll, it'll basically tell us the combustion pressure that's in, you know, happening in the engine. And then everything is just plumbed back to the, what we call the boom up here, and that applies it and reads it out over to the computer um, at the operator's booth. And depending on the test that we're doing, we'll, we can control any of those parameters to, again, whatever we want. This dyno, uh, I believe, has a rev limit of about 12,000 RPM. So it will rev very, very high. Uh, it also has a, a horsepower limit of 460. Uh, and for those of you that know the rating of the 392 is 470, we're using every inch of this dyno. 
Um, the 460 is, is an obser observed number, whereas the 470 is corrected. But we're living every inch of the life of this dyno on this engine, which, you know, it, it makes me proud, you know, that my engine's using all of it.